Awesome. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for checking out uh, this episode of the Winter Garden Yoga blog post. I've got a very special guest today, Mr. Mark Rifkin. Uh, Mark, thanks a million for taking some time out of your day to speak with us today. My um, pleasure. If you could, in about three minutes or less, can you just kind of tell people who you are, where you're from, what you've done, and where you're heading these days? Well, three minutes will be a record, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> um, basically, I've been um, in this industry for the last 45 years. I was a, a gymnast for eight years. I was a competitive gymnast um, in high school, and, and then I went to the University of Iowa on a full scholarship. I was set to go to the Olympics. I had pretty bad injury and rings, blew my shoulder out. Ended up getting into long distance running, marathon running, ultra marathon, and triathlon, uh, the very beginnings of that part of that era. So I went through that for a couple of years while my shoulder healed, ended up getting into competitive bodybuilding, competed in competitive bodybuilding for eight years, ended up training a bunch of professionals um, in the, uh, the top ranks of professional bodybuilders, owned a, a world gym for 10 years. And ended up getting in, in, the, in the gym, getting into competitive uh, powerlifting. So after th I did 13 years of competitive powerlifting, was, I had the opportunity to train um, some very high-end um, competitors, um, world championship level things, got to coach at the International Powerlifting Federation, uh, the women's team a couple of years, and got to coach at that level, which was very exciting. Uh, then uh, had a really bad back injury, ended up finding the kettlebell, and the, the kettlebell really helped me rehabilitate my back and ended up in the kettlebell community um, at uh, what was the RKC and became a senior instructor and a master instructor for them. And now I'm with Strong First and um, been in the kettlebell community for going on 14 years. So the last 45 years, this is pretty much what I've done in terms of training, competing, and studying, and researching, and coaching. And I'm a full-time personal trainer. So that's, uh, this has been my life for a long, long time. How's Excellent. that? <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's a short story. <laughs> you know, and if we expand on some of those bullet points is mm -hmm. uh, just to call back what you said a second ago, the, uh, I guess the meat and potatoes of your career is working one on one with people of all levels, all absolutely, et cetera. So that gives you, I'm, don't let me put words in your mouth, but that probably gives you some insight into what works, what doesn't work, et cetera. A absolutely. I mean, at last count, I think I've, I've had 35,000 hours conservatively of one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I know it boggles my mind because I've been doing it full time since 1998, one-on-one, um, -on -one, 30 to 35 hours a week for, since 1998. And then from 79 to 98, I was doing it basically, you know, 10 to 15 hours a week of personal training. So a conservative estimate is 35,000 hours since 1979. Um, and yet it's, you know, and I really, I worked a lot with, um, I guess, tough, tough cases. I mean, I trained a lot of athletes, but I didn't really do that as a um, coach. I mean, I was, I, I mean, I didn't do that as a personal trainer. That was just coaching, which was separate. I really didn't get paid for that. Uh, the the one on one coaching has been my my business for a long time, um, and that would bring me the insights that I got from my training and from my injuries that I would bring to them. And I would work with regular people from, you know, ten year old kids to eighty year old people, and I still do. And that gives me the most satisfaction. Gotcha, good. And that's a that's a great segue into why I wanted to put this interview together in the first place. So if we take a just a couple steps back, um, mm -hmm. I turned fifty this year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm pretty mobile. I'm, I'm in mm -hmm. pretty good shape, but I'm looking to guys like you may I ask how old you are right now. I'm 61. Okay. 61 years old. And if I'm not mistaken, you're hitting personal records with a uh, military barbell press right. on your head. Yep. You I just did 195 and I'm, I'm going to get 200. So, <laughs> okay. So we're, we're getting close to 200 pressing stuff over your head. Mm -hmm. uh, you're swinging a 120 pound kettlebell with one hand. Um, I've done, I do the 60 kilo, which is 132. And I do the, the 68 kilo also um, in part of the cycle. So yeah, I've, okay. and I've done a hundred, I've done a hundred uh, one arm swings with a 48 kilo in five minutes. So that was, that was challenging <laughs> to say the least. For sure. Yeah, so, 
So that's, those are my two big movements that I use to, to challenge myself because they've proven to be positive experiences for my body. Like certain exercises I just don't train anymore. They just, they just end up hurting me. So I don't right. push them. I don't use them. Okay. But, uh, yeah, the, the one I'm swinging, the, and I do a lot of all the basic patterns, you know, squatting, lunging, all the basic patterns, but those are the ones I push. I got you. Yeah, so I am getting, I am in the best shape. I had my knee replaced five years ago, um, and I'm pretty much in the best shape that I've been in in 20, 25 years. Excellent. And also, um, you mentioned your knee replacement, total knee replacement. Mm -hmm, right. So after total knee replacement, you ruck with 50 pounds on your back right. on Sunday. Sunday's ruck day, is that correct? Right, Sunday and Thursday. So I go two hours on Sunday and an hour on, I'm sorry, two hours on Sunday and an hour on Thursdays. Okay, so this, this is where the, the question comes from. Mm -hmm. what, so what do I have to do? I, I'm a guy, I'm 50 years old. I wanna be rucking for two hours mm -hmm. a week when I'm 60. Mm -hmm. I wanna be swinging kettlebells with one hand when I'm 60. Mm -hmm. So there has to be, there have to be some kind of underlying principles. Absolutely. To 30 year olds, if they're listening, 20 year olds mm -hmm. if they're listening, doesn't matter if you do yoga, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you do Pilates or whatever. Mm -hmm. What are three or five of those principles everyone should consider, what, no matter what their training is? Well, and you asked me this, you know, in, in, in our, our lead up to this is like those three basic ideas. And yeah. I, I thought about it and, and it's, it's hard to, you know, bring everything down. But the most important thing is consistency. That's my number one concept. So under consistency, what's, what's important about consistency is that you have it on the schedule. Okay. Do you have, most people, do you have uh, training sessions on the schedule or are you catch as catch can? And that's where I find, and this is where it comes back to my one-on-one -on -one experience with people is so important and, elus and illuminating because, okay, the people that have me on their schedule, I have clients that I've had for 20 years. I have a lot, like half my clientele I've had for over 18 years. And they see me once or twice a week. And sometimes they do other stuff outside and sometimes they don't. Is that external noise getting in, the Taekwondo? It's, it's coming in a little. I can hear okay. your voice, but there's some screaming well, in the background. Yeah, that's, I'm right. There's a Taekwondo, a kid's twi Taekwondo class. Let me see outside. It's a little better. Yeah, this will be more that's quiet. Good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, um, the consistency is the most important thing. So, is it on the schedule? You know, the people that I've had on the schedule for, you know, all that time, they, they've got a Tuesday and a Thursday appointment. They show up and they do what they can. So, suit up, show up, do the best you can. So, that's the number one thing in terms of, um, over the long haul, getting things done is, you know, have it on your schedule and have some goals. Do you have some goals? It's like, you know, everybody tries to do everything. Hey, Kate, um, all the time. It's like, do you, do you actually know what your goal is in your training? People many times don't have a goal. And then, so consistency is number one. It's like the thing that I'm, this, the tagline I, 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 I most known for is consistency trumps intensity. And intensity is born from consistency. And I still believe that. You know, if you're consistent, you show up on a regular basis, one day it's going to feel really great and you're going to have personal best. And other days you're just going to kind of get in there and just like you're going to work, you're just putting in right. the hours. Right. And, but you got to show up. And then you got to have something that you're specifically working on. So, you know, my goal is my press and my swing. And you, if you try to work everything simultaneously, you'll get nothing. Um, one of my friends, uh, Rob Lawrence, who used to be a senior instructor um, with RKC, it's like he said, if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. And I still live by that rule. It's like you have to have, um, you got to have your priorities and you got to know where they fit on your list. Um, so that's number one is consistency. The second thing is progressions. And I came by this, you know, I spent eight years as a gymnast, um, highly competitive gymnast, and I spent uh, four or five extra years as a, an elite level gymnastics coach, uh, coaching women. And the thing that I learned from gymnastics training more than anything is everything's about progression. Nobody's doing a double backflip until they've mastered a single backflip. <laughs> Nobody's doing a twisting backflip until they mastered a non-twisting backflip. So you have to go by, you know, A, B, C, D, and you break it down. And in the process of learning what the progressions are, you break it down. So progressions are really crucial to this process. And the third thing is what I call body maintenance. So body maintenance is the equivalent of brushing your teeth, right? So 
you foam roll, you stretch, you check your body's alignment, you know, is left side asymmetry, you know, are you asymmetrical today? Did you sit on a plane for 15 hours yesterday and you're super tight? Are you working these body parts to make sure that before you load the body that you're as close to square plumb and neutral as possible? So those three components, consistency, progressions, and some type of self-care, whether it's yoga, whether it's stretching, whether it's foam rolling. I mean, I, I'm not, can, I'm not um, you know, married to one or the other. I have my own techniques and my own principles. But it, as long as people are, are taking an assessment of what's going on with their tissue quality, right? You know, it's called soft tissue for a reason. If it feels like um, beef jerky, it's not normal, right? And most people walk around, you know, their, their soft tissue isn't even close to soft. So they have restricted ranges of motion. And, and guess what? They start loading those patterns with restricted range of motions. They got an injury, but that was completely um, um, able to be taken care of if they had addressed it earlier on. So that's the most important thing. Um, in terms of longevity. So like you said, you want to ruck, you know, this amount, but it's like, is it on your schedule? Do you have a day that you ruck? You know, do you have a day? It's like the worst thing anybody can do is show up and say like, well, what do I feel like doing today? Mm. Well, I feel like going home and having coffee. I don't feel like training <laughs> or taking a nap, right. you know? Um, and that's the problem is like, if you ask yourself how you feel, you're going to get weird responses as opposed to, okay, today's Thursday, Thursday's ruck day, you know? I'm going to go and I'm going to do my best. And I have a progression. Like last week I did, you know, 45 minutes. Today I want to try and get 47 minutes. That's the progression. Well, I'm too tired, 47. So, but it's in the back of your mind. So you have a plan. And most people try to do too much. And they don't ever really succeed at anything because they're trying to put everything on their plate simultaneously. So, so when you're talking about, uh, let's say, consistency or... Progressions. Uh, so we got consistency, we got progressions, and we've got self care, right? Body maintenance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to consistency, uh, and maybe I'm oversimplifying it. If I heard you correctly, it's just a matter of showing up. So you might show up, and there's just not a whole lot of energy that day, but you still show up and do the work for that. You day. can. Well, okay. So the thing with consistency, more most most important is do you have a schedule do you have a plan okay okay so i you know i have a very set plan i've been following it for years you know saturday's heavy swing day sundays is long ruck mondays is press day tuesdays off but it's body maintenance wednesdays i do my speed swing work and push-ups and all my accessory exercise basically i look at my training programming as i have a main course then i have side courses side dishes right so Saturday, the main, the main dish, the entree, is heavy swings. And then I'll do push-ups, then I'll do crawling, then I'll do my accessory work. But I don't try to progress everything simultaneously. My main focus is my heavy swings, or my main focus on Monday is my heavy presses. Um, and then I use the assistance work to balance out my body. So the main thing for consistency, okay, it's Monday. You know, I train, I train at 1 o'clock on Mondays. I get up at 3.45 in the morning. I work six clients. I come home. I, I do intermittent fasting, so I don't eat. So I don't get to eat till I get after training. Believe me, when I get home and I pull in the driveway, the last thing I want to do is train. I want to eat. Oh, I'm tired. You know, I don't want to go in the gym. I don't think about it. It's not, it's not a question. It's Monday. It's press day. I'm pressing. Now, la okay, today I, I would like to do, you know, say I'm going to do five sets of five with a certain weight. Last week I did five sets of five with a weight that tells me today's press, I should do a little heavier. But as I'm going, it may not work out. I still do my best, but I have a plan and I do my best to stick to it. And that plan is based off of what I did the week before and the week before and the week before, again, in keeping with my goal. So I have big goals, right? I have the, like a 200 pound press for me was like the dream of the dream of the dream goal. My first goal, I mean, I've been pressing for four years um, with a barbell overhead. And my first goal was just to be able to touch the bar to my chest because my shoulders are so tight, I couldn't even touch the bar. And then I thought, well, maybe I'd love to be able to press, you know, plates, 135 pounds. That was my first goal. And then once I did that, it's like, yeah, I got my weekly goals. And then I have my monthly goals. And then I have my dream goals. And I don't really, you know, like, okay, so right now I'm on the verge of pressing 200 pounds. 
Um, I've missed it five times, <laughs> but I pressed 195. But it's like, okay, my dream now that I'm close to 200, which was the dream goal, in the back of my mind, it's like, well, if I can press 200, I should be able to press, you know, 210. If I can press 210, I can press 220. So that my dream goal is two plates on the bar. And it's almost irrelevant if I make it or not. It's what matters is that it keeps, I have that goal in the back of my mind and I have something to work for. I have some motivation to try to achieve more and to push myself a little bit more. Got you. Now I was wondering, um, cause you mentioned Rob Lawrence's quote, mm -hmm. everything's a priority, then nothing's a priority. Right. Because even me as a yoga studio owner, I'll speak to one of my clients and they, they're, they'll tell me that they're busted up or something. Mm -hmm. So in, in my mind, when I've spoken with these clients, I'm thinking they're only doing yoga and maybe swimming or something. Mm -hmm. Turns out they're doing high intensity interval training. Right. They're training for a triathlon. They're training for a marathon. Then they've got an obstacle course that's coming up mm -hmm. and they, they get like frustrated that the yoga is not doing what the yoga is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. The running's not doing what it's supposed to do. So can you kind of address that a little bit? And Well, yeah, that's impossible. <laughs> that would be impossible. Because the, the thing that everybody doesn't, either they don't know or they don't remember, is that recovery precedes everything. Okay, you can only, so the, the, um, the equation for progress is very simple. Because it's, the goal is adaptation, right? So say I ran a 10-minute mile. I want to run a nine minute mile. Then I want to run an eight minute mile. So that's an adaptation, right? So first you can run a 10 minute mile. You've adapted to 10 minute miles. That's great. You want to go a little harder that you've got to give your body a little bit more stress, but you, you've got to recover from that stress to adapt. So the equation is this adaptation, which is everybody's goal mm -hmm. equals intent overload plus recovery. So adaptation plus Adaptation equals overload plus recovery. So what does that overload mean? Overload means you're used to running 10-minute miles and you try to run a 945 mile. That's overload. A little more, you're not trying to run a, a nine-minute mile because that's, right. that's too much. So you take it up to, okay, I'm going to do a little more than I did. An inch by inch is a cinch. Yard by yard is hard. So, <laughs> you know, no, it's a silly that's little great. ditty, but it, but it works. It's true. It's an inch that's by great. inch. It's like, and everybody makes fun of me in my in the strong first community because you know I have these I like a little these little one and a quarter pound plates. So if I if I'm doing one thirty five, I might put you know, you know one thirty seven and a half on the bar. It's like well that doesn't matter. Well it does. You keep adding those two and a half quarter plates up. Eventually they'll equal ten pounds, which will eventually equal twenty pounds. But you won't feel it's very hard to feel the difference in these little right. plates. Right. So it just gives me a way to challenge myself a little bit more. So again. If you want to adapt, and adaptation is the key, right? That makes you, I've adapted. I used to be able to do 130. Now I can do 150, 160, 170. Each one of those steps has been me, my body, adapting to a new overload. Now, once I, in order to adapt to it, I've got to rest. Okay, so if I'm burning the candle at all ends, right? You, you can only recover for so much work. So you're running your marathon, you're doing your marathon training and you're doing your CrossFit training and you're doing your yoga training and you want to make progress everywhere, every single day. That's just illogical. That's somebody who hasn't really had really good information about the, the possibilities of how training works. So, I mean, one of the, uh, the, 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 the lines from Strong First is we reverse engineer what the best do naturally. So look at the best. You know, you look at an Olympic runner or an Olympic weightlifter. How do they train? Well, they don't try to become, they're not trying to, you know, train for the Olympics and weightlifting and try to run a marathon at the same time because they know it's not possible. So it's the, the, the ability to increase the loading is dependent on the ability to recover from yesterday's loading. So say, okay, I want to I wanna hit my best numbers in weightlifting. Okay, and I also want to run a marathon. Well, that's great. Hit your best numbers in weightlifting and then train for the marathon afterwards. Right. Trying to do everything simultaneously is just, it's a fairy tale, man. It's like, you know, <laughs> it, right. just, it just doesn't work that way. Like, I'd like to become, I want a PhD in neuroscience 
and I want to be a brain surgeon at the same time. It's like you can't do both at the same time. There's not enough hours in the day. Right. It's the same with training. You, there's not enough hours in the day to recover. And then most people, you know, you got two ends of the spectrum, right? You have the people that do nothing but lay around and recover. But they never have any stress. Right. And you have, the, and you have the go-getters that you can't get to sit down and put your feet up. It's a balance. It's like everything in life, right? It's a balance. Got you. And does that fall under the goal category? So if, if mm-hmm. the goal is get better at yoga, it means concentrate more on yoga. But does that mean... Don't do any kettlebells. Don't do any running. No, and that's a, re- that's a really good point. So it's like I said in my training. So my goal, my main course of my training would be, say, Saturday's heavy swings. But I, I'll do three to five different other exercises because I also have other goals. I want to keep my mobility up, so I'll spend some time on my squat pattern. Or I want to keep um, you know, my shoulder mobility up. I'll do crawling for that. So there's other things, but you can't expect to – ramp everything up simultaneously right but you want to keep it in the mix so there's certain patterns that have not proven to be uh, nice to my body so that doesn't mean i don't do those patterns it just means i don't load them heavy right because they've proven not to be friendly but i need to keep my you know my pick a pattern you know it's a hinge pattern or a a squat pattern or a twisting pattern I may not be in the mode, the mode of loading them, to progressing them, but I still keep them in the mix. So your yoga person that's tuning up for, you know, making the most progress in yoga, instead of using, you know, the, the kettlebell swing as his main course, that's, you know, instead of doing 200 or 300 swings, he does 100 swings. Right. Got he you. keeps it in the mix because it's necessary for the foundational work, but he, but he doesn't stress about how much you know, try to set personal bests and try to, to move everything along. Many of my exercises, I haven't changed the weights in, in a long, long time. You know, I do shoulder accessory work. I just, I just get the work done, but I don't stress about, you know, I haven't, you know, moved from the 20 pounds to the 30 pound dumbbells. I, I just put the work in. But the other parts that, I, that I'm really prioritizing, those I pay very close attention to has the, um, have the numbers gone up? Has the, has the volume gone up? Have I adapted to new boats? Got you. And then if I'm understanding correctly, if there's a special event to ramp up like uh, an SFG certification, mm-hmm. that's the time to switch the gears a little bit. Focus more <laughs> on the kettlebell stuff. It doesn't mean drop yoga completely. Right. But ramp up your kettlebell stuff, recover with the yoga or recover with walking. Is that a well, system? again, yeah, absolutely. So and it's an interesting um, SFG that that weekend. You gotta that's a whole nother level of stress, right? So that's got to be priority one, two, and three. Now, remember what the the the, the mantra is: adaptation um, adaptation equals overload plus recovery. The yoga in, in training for an SFG or any you know any big time serious challenge that would be part of your recovery modality. So you still, or your body maintenance, that's where you've got to make sure the tissue quality is correct, right? That's to make sure that, you know, you're elongating the body and that you're checking for um, asymmetries and things like that. The walking would be just active recovery, right? Yeah. So you, you still have all these different side courses that need to be utilized. It's just, it's a matter of proportion, right? So how much time do you have in a day? Right. So that's the real key. Got you. Um, earlier, well, actually just a second ago, you're talking about the different movement patterns. Mm-hmm. Do you have, I'm going to guess you have them memorized. I, I know a few of them. Mm-hmm. It's like push, pull, squat, hinge, twist. So the basic seven, um, I got this from Paul check, who was a mentor of mine back in the nineties. And Paul was basically the, the, the true father of functional fitness because before Paul, everything was bodybuilding. And, you know, either a tra- an Olympic athlete when you're doing, you know, your sport or you're doing bodybuilding. So Paul's thing was basically, you know, get on your feet, stand up, get off the bench and do these functional patterns. And the seven primal patterns that he uses and I still work from is squatting in no particular order, squatting, lunging, pushing, pulling, bending, twisting and gait. And I include gait as a primal pattern. Um, especially I had to relearn how to walk again after my knee replacement. Right. Cause I didn't walk right for 25 years cause my knee didn't bend. Um, I couldn't go downstairs. 
I could go upstairs, kind of, but I could not go downstairs like a human. Right. So when I got my knee replaced, I literally had to relearn how to walk. So gait is definitely a primal pattern. It's probably, you know, I would probably put gait at number one. Because if you can't walk correctly, none of the other work patterns are going to work. So you got to squat. And for years when I couldn't squat correctly, I still stretched. I used my squat pattern as a stretch rather than a load. Same with lunging. So it's squatting, lunging, push. That could be push-up, overhead press, um, bench press. It could be any pressing exercise in any plane. So squatting, lunging, pushing, pulling. Pulling could be pull-ups. It could be rows, any variation of any of those. Mm -hmm. These are the big categories. Squatting, lunging, pushing, pulling, bending. That could be a deadlift. That could be a kettlebell swing. Twisting. That could be any type of, that could be a Turkish getup. That could be any twisting patterns that you get in yoga and gait, which could be walking, crawling, running, swimming. Those are all gait patterns. So that's like when, when I'm looking at programming a person, uh, they come in, there, I, I pick one from each. What is the entry point for that person? Okay, so they, they got to, can they do a squat? No. Can they do a squat holding on? Maybe. Can they squat to a bench? Yes, that's their entry point. So can they, their bending pattern, can they, can they swing? No, they can't, they can't, they can't reach down to grab the floor. So I build the floor up. So I'm, it's an entry, you know, I put a block on. Sure. So, you know, wherever that entry point is, that's a start. But I'm trying to get each one of these seven patterns engaged in their program. And then as it comes around and you experiment and fine tune what they can and can't do, then you build from there. So you find, okay. John can't bend over and grab the kettlebell because his hamstrings are too tight and his hips are locked up. So then we back it up. We'll do rocking patterns or soft tissue work or various static stretching to build that. And then lo and behold, now all of a sudden he can reach the kettlebell and we build from there. So for me, I mean, this is a life process. This is a life thing. It's not like there's no finish line, right? I'm not going to get to point like, oh, I press this and now I don't have to exercise anymore. So it's just, you know. Right. I'm 61. I mean, you know, getting old, the older you get, the more important strength and, and mobility is. It gets serious, man. Got you. And I, uh, during that uh, explanation, I kept hearing you say, build, build, build. So that's progression. That's the progression. Correct. So if the fella, whomever, male or female comes in, if they can't touch their toes, mm -hmm. there's no point in loading up a bar and say, hey, let's <laughs> do some deadlifts. Right. 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 And is this also, is this kind of where the body maintenance comes in? So someone's kind of busted mm -hmm. up. They, they can't replicate a pushing movement. Right. So that's where. Well, let's, let's, let's back that up again. Okay. So, 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 so say somebody can't, they can't, they can't touch their toes and they can't, they can't reach the barbell to do a barbell deadlift or a kettlebell right. to do the kettlebell deadlift. So I'm going to teach them a hinging pattern, right? I'm going to teach them how to activate their hips. Now, at some point, I'll give them a kettlebell. Probably not a barbell. I'm not a big fan of barbell deadlifts. Um, but it doesn't mean that I'm just going to stretch for six months before we touch it. We're going to do a variation. I'm going to find, like I said, I'm going to find an entry point that they can do some type of hinging pattern that fits their body. Like it, if the kettlebell is too low to the ground, then I'll just put it on plates until they're in a hinge pattern. And I'll slowly lower the, the plates until they can do a proper, you know, they can reach the floor. Gotcha. But it doesn't mean like I'm just going to do stretching for six months and then we'll do strengthening. So the, the body maintenance, Kelly Starrett, who's a doctor of physical therapy and very mobility guy, um, his, his phrase that I love is he says that every human being, a healthy joint has full flexion and full extension plus a little bit extra. Okay, so if you don't have full flexion and full extension plus a little extra in all your basic joints. And I'm just talking ankles, knees, hips, right. shoulders, thoracic, whatever, individually, not as a movement, but as, you know, single joints. Then I, that's my starting point for you, right? Okay, so I, have, I had really bad knee injury, but I also had really bad shoulder injury from gymnastics, which I never got fixed. So I still suffer shoulder issues a lot. A lot of restriction. I'm constantly working. It's gotten way, way better, but it's not part of it's anatomical. I need, you know, another sh new shoulder, but it's not. Well, the shoulder replacements yeah. are nowhere near as good as the knee, so I'm not going to have it done until they are. Yeah. But 
I'm still working in all the accompanying muscles that are restricting my shoulder range of motion. Right. So I'm looking for healthy joints. And then I'm looking from the joints, I, from isolation, then we integrate. So, okay, so now I've got an isolation. I'm working on my lats were too tight, so I opened up my lats. Now my shoulder works better. Now I'm going to find a press that I can do. Are you there? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to find a press that I can do. Um, you know, for some reason, my battery says low. So I'm going to go back in the gym and get a power cord, okay. and we'll continue going. But I'm going to see, hear some noise. That's okay. um, We've got about eight minutes left. It's about 1.37. Oh, okay, perfect. So let me just do this so it doesn't okay. cut off mid. Um, but so that's, you know, first I'll isolate. Then I'll integrate, and I'll find the, the, the movement pattern that fits that person. And then we build, and that's a progression, right? So it's like, if you can do five, five pounds for 10 repetitions today, then I'm gonna try six repetitions, or, or it's 10 pounds for five, whatever, the, whatever we decide is the goal. And, because that's a challenge. You've gotta challenge yourself at some point. So that's the, that's the basic concept there, right? Is I'm gonna take the person where they are, no judgment. You know, you can't squat yeah. to a quarter parallel. Next time we're going to get to add an inch to it. Then we're going to add another quarter inch to it. We'll progress it till you can do a normal pattern. So again, like if you can't, I'm not going to take a person that can barely do a quarter squat and, you know, say, well, we're going to put plates on the bar and see if that'll get you down. Right. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. but again, it's looking at progressing in a, in a, in a, in a comfortable manner because if you can, if you're, say you do, say you decide, okay, I want to be able to squat 135 pounds and you do it. Okay. And you say, that's enough for me. That's fine. Then you're in maintenance. Maintenance is fine. Right. If, if I don't ever need to squat more than 135 pounds of the barbell and I'm happy with that, that's maintenance. That's where you are. But if you say like, I'd like to get stronger in this movement because I really like it. Then you've got to figure out, you know, protocols that allow you to do that. That's the progression. Got you. Okay. And yeah. again, trying to, you, you know, you're going to find, everyone's going to find my body likes this exercise better than that exercise. And then those are the ones like, you know, I don't do well with, um, with barbell work except for the press. Cause I spent 25 years competing between bodybuilding and powerlifting my body said, okay, enough with the barbell. <laughs> and part of the problem with the barbell is that I'm not symmetrical enough. Gotcha. Like, for example, you know, I have a really strong right leg and a really weak left leg for years because of my knee. So when I do a, a barbell squat or deadlift, my dominant side takes over. Yeah. And that caused a lot of torque and a lot of rotation in my spine. So now I like exercises. That's why I like the one. I don't do two-arm kettlebell swings. It's too symmetrical for me. The one arm swing is asymmetrical, which builds symmetry for me. Gotcha. Some people thrive on two hand swings and have problems with one arm swings. It's about finding your movements that your body likes and that you can do as, you know, that are within those big patterns. Got you. So if I understand correctly, it's, you know, just a, a mental experiment. If I mm -hmm. sat and watched you for a week working with clients coming in and out of the out of your facility, mm -hmm. I may see some of the same, I'll see the same patterns, mm -hmm. but I may not see uh, like the same workout. So in other words, someone comes Correct. in, they might do push-ups, body weight, hinging, weighted squats, and like maybe rubber band kinds of things for pulling. Is that correct? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So and somebody else might do the exact opposite. They might be doing pull-ups and barbell presses and deadlifts, but just stretching their squat pattern because they're not, okay. they're not really safe doing a, a loaded squat pattern. Yeah, everything's individualized. And that's the other very important concept is everyone's unique. Everybody brings different body to the table. Not only John compared to Joe, but John's body today versus John's body last week or John's body in two weeks. Like John just got off a 22-hour plane flight right? And spent right. the last week in a hotel and planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> and John doesn't need any loading. John needs to unload 
his body. So we're going to spend more body maintenance. It's like that's part of the, the personal training process. It's personal. You know, it's like I'm not trying to fit everybody into the same mold. Uh, or mold. I mean, what do you do? Okay, so you set your goal, you reach your goal. What's next? You get a new goal. Right. So don't stress. Right. Right. Don't stress because as soon as you accomplish this, like, okay, so my first goal was to press one thirty-five. I did that. What I do? Next goal is one fifty. Did that. Now it's, two, you know, then it was one ninety. I did that. You know, now I got to do two hundred. So what happens after two hundred? Two hundred five. It doesn't matter. So if I miss, I don't get frustrated because it's like the next day, I just got to go back and train anyhow. Consistency. Consistency, right. (laughs) Right. And here's the thing is you never know when you're going to have a good day. Like most of my best workouts come on days I walk in the gym feeling like death warmed over. Yeah. It just strikes you by surprise. And the days where, you know, you've meditated, you've visualized, you've got 10 hours of sleep, you stretch, everything's perfect. You go in there and you can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've had that happen enough to know that it's like I get more concerned on days I feel great going into my workout, days I feel bad because it's usually a bad omen if I feel good. <laughs> I'm not kidding either. No, I also, no awesome. I, I understand. I, I felt that too. Exactly what you said. I, I would just repeat your words. It's like you come in, feel good, grab the 32K kettlebell, clean it to your chest, and it's like, oh, this is not going up today. <laughs> Dump right. It down on the ground. Well, but – but here's the other thing about that is like when you, I'm agreeing with you, but also like, okay, people go in there and they haven't pressed the, they haven't pressed the 24 K. Right. And now they grab the 32. It's like, what makes you think you're ready for the 32? Right. right. So if you went last week and you did the 32 for three and you missed four, that makes sense. If you haven't, you know, you got to stay with the progressions, right? Right. People, people ask me all the time. It's like, well, I tried the snatch test and I didn't make it with a 24. It's like, okay, did you pass it with a 20? No. Did you pass it with a 16? No. Well, what makes you think you could do with a 24? Right. Go right. pass it with a 16 first and right. then go to the 20 and then go to the 24. Right. That's progression. That's, that's the gymnastics influence, right? You have to build on – you have to build – the bigger the base, the higher the peak, right? It's for any, any structure, right? If you want to build a 1,000-foot a thousand thousand building – that foundation is going to be big and long and, and uh, huge. Right. You know, if you want a 10 foot building, you don't need a big foundation. Depends on, you know, it's like, what do people want? What do you want to achieve? It goes back to what's your goal. Correct. You don't have a goal. Well, that's the difference between training and exercise. Training has a goal and a purpose and a destination. Exercise is just anything, right? It's like people write exercise programs. It's like, why go and do what you feel. And I'm not putting down exercise. Mm-hmm. What, you know, that's the days you go, what do I feel today? Like, I feel like going for a jog. Go for a jog. I don't feel like going for a jog today. Let's do some push-ups. I want to break a sweat. That's exercise, and that's fine. But don't be confused when you don't go anywhere. Right. You don't get anywhere because you're not, you're not planning, right? If you get in your car and you want to go to New York, but you're headed to Mexico, you're not going to get to New York. Right. You got to know where you're headed to have a – to go there it sounds silly but it's like i see this every single day right yeah you know, like people who want to lose weight that never weigh themselves or, or know how many calories they're taking in like how's that going to work or or sometimes the folks who will say mark i'm glad i'm glad i caught you hey what's a quick way for me to lose weight and get into shape where i don't have to change what i eat and i don't have to exercise uh, magic dust. And <laughs> right. as soon as you find that, let me have some because I need some too. Yeah, right. it's just it's just magical thinking. You know, it's childish thinking. It's not. It's not. It's not an adult thought process. You right. know, it just really isn't. People, you know, you take very mature, very smart people in all walks of their life, and it comes to exercise, they think like kids. Yeah, Mark, I I hate to cut us short. I, I don't want to make you late for your next appointment. Yeah, I, yeah. I got to go too. About four minutes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with us today. My are, pleasure. Are there any links or any things? Sure. Share my website. You? My website Please. is giriastrength.com. Okay. G-I-R-Y-A strength.com. Um, I have a blog that nobody reads. I've had the last, <laughs> I've had this since uh, May of 2004. I've written every workout down for the last whatever, 14 years. Um, you know, my Facebook page is Mark Rifkin. So there's always, I always put stuff up there. Yep. Um, so anything that anybody wants to know what's going on with me, I'm 
you know, just Google me. I'm real easy to find. Awesome. Um, they have any questions, send me an email. My email's up there too. So, you know, I'm more than happy to answer questions and stuff like that. The best thing is, you know, people, you know, jump on, on jump on Facebook and ask me a question on there. That's always good for me too. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Have a great session. Have a great weekend. My pleasure. And thanks for, thanks for having me. I'm, awesome. I'm honored that you invited me. Thank you, Mark. We'll talk soon. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.